Over the last 10 years, the Department of Radiology at the University of Florida College of Medicine has conducted a simulation-based evaluation of radiology resident competence in critical care imaging. 243 residents interpreted this case of leg calve perthes disease as one of 65 cases during an 8-hour simulated on-call shift, with a median score of 0 out of 10 and an overall average score of 3.91 out of 10. Overall, the average number of points lost out of 10 to observational discipline was 5.90. At the same time, 0.19 points were lost due to interpretive errors on the part of the residents. We define an effective report to be one which achieves scores between 7 and 10. In terms of letter grades, this would be an A or a B. In this most missed case, 37% of residents produce effective reports. We define a report having a critical error to be one with scores between 0 and 2. In terms of letter grades, this would be an F or a D. In this most missed case, 59% of residents produce reports with critical errors. Two views of the pelvis in a 10-year-old boy demonstrate subchondral lucency at the superlateral aspect of the left femoral head, consistent with a subchondral fracture and osteonecrosis. There is mild widening of the left teardrop distance compared to the right, suggesting presence of a left hip joint effusion. Orthopedic consultation is recommended. These findings would be assigned an acuity rank of priority and should be discussed with the referring clinician. Leg calve perthes disease is osteonecrosis of the femoral head epiphysis in a child. Early radiographic findings include widening of the teardrop distance, which may be due to thickening of the cartilage, joint laxity, or presence of joint fluid, subchondral fracture, which is known as the crescent sign, and fragmentation, flattening, and increased mineralization of the femoral head epiphysis. An additional pertinent finding would be to quantify the approximate proportion of epith epiphyseal involvement. In this case, this measures approximately 50%. We would also want to closely assess the contralateral side as bilateral involvement is frequent. For every hip radiograph, I closely follow the cortical margin of the femoral head and acetabulum, which should be relatively sharp. This allows me to appreciate subtle subchondral fractures, as in this case, increased mineralization in the femoral head suggesting osteonecrosis, and erosions suggesting inflammatory arthropathy.